Hello everyone and welcome to another Jay Robinson Art Peel Off Painting Project. Today we're going to be painting Butterfly on the Flowers. The cool thing about this project is we're actually going to be painting this on a tote bag and not on a canvas. But before we show you what we're going to be doing here, let's take a look at some of the equipment that we have. Today we're going to be painting with white, blue, yellow, pink, green, and black. Now these six colors are provided for you and we give you more than you need for this project. And we like to give you a very nice set of brushes that comes with a lot of different sizes for you to use for future projects. We give you a plastic apron to protect your clothing. We also give you, in this case for the bag, a nice styrofoam brush to help you paint in the background. We give you a spatula that you'll grip up here by the neck to remove your peels. We also give you one paper towel that I like to keep folded along the side. You definitely want to make sure you bring a couple of these with you. What we don't provide you with is a cup of water which you want to keep to the side. Now before, let's take a look at the peel. So here's our image that we'll be painting today. Let's just move this to the side. And this is our prepared surface. Now I just want to talk about this briefly. When you buy a peel-off tote bag kit, what you will get will be the tote bag. You will get the images that you've selected for the bag that you want to paint. And you will get this square that's already cut out for you that you'll simply place on the bag. And I've taken the opportunity to put masking tape around the edges just to better protect the edges of my bag. The styrofoam brush that we provide you, once you place your box cutout image, you simply use the styrofoam brush to paint the desired color that you want here. I like to use white so that when I paint other colors on top, it shines up. This could be black. You can make this light blue, which is what we're going to be using for the sky. You could put any color that you want. So I just wanted to give you that as an idea. At Peel Off, we also sell these particular peels separately in single bags, which we'll talk about in future videos. And you can definitely go to our peeloff.com website to purchase them. You could also just buy the block cutout sheet if you want, so that this will help you to be able to define the area in which you want to work on instead of you trying to measure with masking tape we just try to keep it simple. But let's get down to our painting. Off to the right here, I have my usual set of beat up brushes and they are beat up, see? But just because something's old doesn't mean you throw it away. There's always a use for it. These brushes have been loyal and they've also been very, very helpful for me. And I'm very, very comfortable with them. What I've also done is I've taken a paper plate which you can use a styrofoam plate or a palette or a palette sheet. And I've placed my colors in the form of what I like to call a clock formation, keeping all of the darker colors away from each other, such as the blue and the black to make easy distinction of where they are. And like I pointed out, I like to keep my paper towel folded because I don't crumple it. I tend to just wipe my brushes like this after I clean them. And as a point of suggestion, when you use your tools, no matter that you've finished with one area, clean them off first, leave them to the side rather than leave them moistened in a cup. But that's your call. I'm just giving you that as a tip. So let's begin. The first thing I'm going to paint is my background. So I'm going to try to show you here. I'll take a little bit of white and on the same brush, I touch a little bit of blue. See, so I have a little bit of blue and white. Maybe I just get a little bit more white. Because what I'm looking to see is what this, these two colors as a mixture is going to look like. 
And I like that light blue. So you see, I mix on the canvas rather than taking the paint and stirring it in the palette and making one solid color. Because I want my sky to be kind of streaky. So I don't mind if different values of the colors start to appear. I'm just gonna scrub, because working on a canvas tote bag is slightly different than working on a canvas. So I'm giving a little extra scrub to make sure I get in the divots and I definitely wanna paint around my peel. So again, I'm just going for a background color, tapping still, a little white, a little blue, and I just mix them together, let the colors do what they're gonna do, overlapping them as I come down. And I'm staying in one direction. You see, I'm not going like this. So in case brush marks remain, it'll look like streaks in my sky versus a waterfall. Now there are occasions where you will scrub up and down, but I wouldn't make that a, a common practice when it comes to the sky. Because just streaks remain, see those darker ones? They'll look like they're whisking across my sky versus them being a waterfall and some kind of an ocean scene, which right now today I am not creating. If you should happen to apply too much blue, you could always go back and add white right over it. If you find your colors are too light, then you can always pick up the darker color and add it. Right now, I'm trying to focus on making sure I get around my peel and then I scrub into these divots that I see opening up. So I'm just going to keep adding this color combination of the white and blue and just continually bring that down. Now, probably for me, as I get closer to the bottom here, past the third of the way down, I'm probably gonna go a lot wider, you know, with my color, just so that I could have what I want as atmosphere. So maybe I'll put on less blue at this point, more white to just lighten up as I come down towards the bottom. Here down, I'm gonna be placing some grass and some stems on these flowers. So I really don't mind if it's like that little lighter value for me. It's, it works for me in the way I see my image. Now I'm just scrubbing, making sure I get everywhere. There, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now I have my background in and I'm satisfied with it. I'm not gonna go back in and straighten up these streaks. I'm gonna leave them just as they are. My lighter colors down at the bottom. Taking my brush, putting in a cup of water, stirring it. The sound you're gonna hear is me banging it from side to side. And then I'll show you this. I take my brush and I just wipe it. And then I just leave it to the side just in case I need it for something in the future. So now I know that this is my butterfly shape. I know that these are my floral shapes. So what I'm gonna do now is pull down some stems on these flowers so that I could just go right into um, peeling and starting to define my picture. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of green, maybe a touch of yellow with that to lighten it up just, just a smidget. Yellow or white will do that for you. I just prefer yellow. And I'm just gonna drag this flat brush, not by this fat side, but by this narrow side. So you see, I have the flat side, I have the narrow side. By rotating the brush with my hands, I can control the width. So I can go this way, or I can go this way. And I'm gonna literally hold the brush straight up and down, and I'm just gonna pull straight down. It's good enough. It shows me where it is. I can always fatten it up. Now you can use any size brush that you want for this. I'm choosing to use this with a brush. I like that. So I'm gonna go here, add a little bit more green, some yellow, and I'm just gonna pull down a line here. Cause right now I'm just setting up my stems for my flowers. I could always go back in enrich the color by darkening it, 
trying to just pull down, look like little lollipops right now. And that's all I want. Now with this same brush, I'm going to pick up some green. And I'm going to pull some petals that are here. Still using the same up and down motion. I'm just going to pull like to the side here. But as I pull, maybe I'll turn the brush a little bit and start creating a shape as if this leaf has a little bit of a shape. Now you see those little dots? I call those divots. Those I'm gonna cover, but for right now, I'm just gonna continue to construct the shape. Taking the brush and very slowly pulling it back into the stem, covering it slightly. There, that's, that's pretty cool, I like that. Now I'm gonna do one off to the other side. When it comes to the thickness of things and the shape of things, you have to use your own judgment for that. You have to decide how you want your flowers, uh, petals, and stems, whatever to look. So I'm going to come on this side, and I'm going to grab another one. And I'm just going to come, and as I'm coming down, turn my brush slightly. And so that maybe this one looks like that. Kind of wraps, kind of wraps around it. And it wraps inside like this. And now I'll start to develop the shape to suit my purposes, cover my divots. And maybe it goes like that. So there's that one. So now we do this one here. Same thing. Just gonna grab a little color, maybe a touch into a little bit of yellow for this one. And I'm just looking to see where these go. So I'm gonna come here and turn my brush slightly. See, that's a good example. You see how it has all of those divots? But that's okay, because what I'm looking for is where it's going. Now I can go back and redefine this by just slowly adding more color or blending a little bit to make the color block in that shape. And there, that's good enough for me. And now I'll do it on the other side. Grab a little color. Maybe this one's... Goes over here a little bit, pull down, go over, and I'm going to say that that's good for that. I'm going to go high just a little bit more, and now I'll softly pull those colors together, turn them into themselves. There. So you see I'm just developing these little designs that are representing uh, petals of uh, leaves coming off of the stem. And of course this little one would have a smaller one, so let's just go like this. Pull this in, and then maybe go to the other side. And I'll pull this one in. There, that's good enough. This is good enough shape for me. Now I wanna pretend that you can see some points of some grass blades that are just kind of protruding into the picture. So I'm going to grab my brush and just literally whisk up and I'm just going to pull in some shapes that's just going to represent something towards the bottom. Now because it's my bag, I'm probably going to run this design all the way across here, just pulling up some little lines like so, just to help fill in my bottom for my bag. Because this is a little bit different than a painting because this is a tote bag. So I want to have a little bit of a solid bottom. Where in a painting, I might just sparingly put a few and be happy. But for my bag, I wanted to have a slightly different look. So I'm going to exaggerate the amount. And just literally keep going across with that kind of XY motion. And then softly blend in some color here at the base to make it look full. And let's see that again in here. There's nothing. Just going to pull up some a few lines. Left, right, left, right. Making like little X's, if you will. And then maybe I'll just pull some color right into this area. Like that. And just do the same here. And there. Now I have some kind of a grassy look that's happy for me. Maybe I want some little decorative uh, petals baby petals, if you will, that are coming from here. So maybe I'll pull a little shape, pull it like that. Maybe another little shape here. I'm just having fun. You don't have to do half these things. 
It's your painting to do what you want. I'm just choosing to add elements to help make my painting a little bit more interesting for me. This one I'm just going to leave alone. Because this one is still little, still a little bit of a baby. Now, I'm going to clean off my brush. Now, while this is drying, or once this dries, I could always go back in, and maybe we'll do it later, into these leaves, adding yellow or darker values of green or some darker values on the stem. But I'm going to keep moving along. So, let's get to the flowers, which is another easy part. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my spatula. Now, for this one, the butterfly is actually behind this petal or this flower here. So, maybe I'll go on the butterfly just to try to remove it. So, bear with me while I just get something to start to peel up. Remember the rule, you get anything. See, you get that little bit right there, you can stop, take your finger, and pull away. Because I want to leave the butterfly where he is for now. So I don't want to peel everything up. I just want to peel away the florals. So let me just get under, peel off my shapes, and then I'm going to start to add some color to them. Just some color. I'm not trying to get too specific and detailed. And the way I'm going to make these, these are like mums or football flowers. Um, I'm just going to tap. I'm not going to brush stroke. You can brush stroke. I'm just going to tap. I'm going to first tap into some white and just tap some white. Then I'm going to tap into some pink and then tap into some pink. Now, what I'm looking for is that kind of look. I'm looking for the look to be as if something was running through here. Like you see, like it left a footprint. So I'm just literally going to tap this color, but I'm going to start getting closer to the edge. I'm just tapping into a little white and a little pink, and I'm just going to tap into the edge just to kind of fill it. Now, if it goes over, it's fine too. It's okay, because all I'm looking for is to tap this color in, and I'm tapping because I don't want the shape to be flat. I want it to look as if I don't know, like some kind of footprints have ran through here. So I'm just going for the tap to keep that look alive. And it's a good practice so I don't get comfortable and start stroking it. Because I don't want to stroke it. Now the tap could look like a solid color at a point. But I'm still going to tap no matter what. I'm suggesting that you do the same. But you are the artist. It's your painting. Paint it the way you want. Okay, so you see I have some color in there. You see how some of the white is still showing, some of the pink. Now I'm just going to go into just pink, and I'm just going to start here, leaving some footprints, as I call them. And just let this slowly start to dry a little bit so that I can continue with that motion. Because this is what I'm looking for. But I'm not done, but I'm going to come back. I'm going to go here, here, then I'll come back here. So with that same dirty brush, I'm just going to tap into some white and just start my footprints just to see how it starts. Then I'll grab some pink and start pulling in some of that color. Then I'll go back and grab some white and some pink and I'll just keep tapping until I get a desired effect. I'm just going to tap. I don't have to have every little line covered because I am going with white and pink. See, I don't know if you can see this, but you see how it has a little bit of variation in there from the tapping versus the stroking. Then I'm going to tap in just, just some pink. And right along the base here, I'm just going to tap some footprints to start setting this up. The same way I started setting that one up. And I'm going to leave it. And I'm going to go here, tapping right into some white. And then just start tapping this little one. I know it doesn't make sense what I'm saying or doing, but it does to me. It makes sense because if I stroke this, I would get a completely different look. And I'm going for a kind of a, like there's a lot of clumpiness in this flower. That's what this flower shape basically looks like. So now I'm just going to wipe my brush and show you what I mean. No water yet. Just going to wipe some of the color off. I'm going to go into the darker pink only. Come right in here and tap, tap, tap. 
just to get it started. See, because this is really what I'm after. That look right there. Like there's a lot of little clumpy color. And when I said I was going back, now I'm going to grab just pink. Go back up here and just slowly tap to get those shapes in. See, to get those shapes in as though there's a whole lot of different things going on here. And maybe I'll skip some spaces. Go up around here a little bit. You can do this all day long to get the desired effect that you want. But this is kind of what I'm after. I'm not going for realism. Going for an impressionist look. Impressionistic look of these mums having all these little growths. These little uh, cauliflower type shapes that are just making up the entire shape. That's, that's what I'm after. I'm after that look. Right there, like a bunch of little taps. And if I see it too regimented, then I'll tap some to just blend some together so that they're not like a, a pattern. I mean, it is a pattern, but not like a distinct pattern, like as if soldiers are being represented. So here, this is good enough for me. Again, for now, I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm going to keep moving. We'll come back to this. We'll come back to this if needed. But now it's time to remove the butterfly. So I'm going to go out here, dig under, just to get something to turn. Use my fingers. Pull up my butterfly shape. Now let's just talk about the butterfly quickly. This is going to be the body where the, the antennas are going to come from here. So I know that this is going to be like the body shape. So I'm just going to leave that open because black is a great coverage here. I'm going to paint all of the wing yellow, leaving just a little shape here. That would be my end shape. I don't know yet, but a shape here that will be the body. I'm going to continue to use between this flat brush and this rounded brush because there's some little corners here that I want to use the rounded brush to get into. But I could also use this flat brush to catch some of the bigger areas. Okay, so now that that's explained to you, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my little round brush, dip it into the water, turn it on the paper towel to bring it back to some kind of a point. I'm going to pick up some yellow. And I'm going to start very carefully going around the edges here. Just like so. And remember that body shape? So now I'm just going to take the brush and just kind of wiggle in a little shape that I'm going to say later will be the butterfly body. So now that I've established my stop line here, I will not go further than that. And I could actually paint this whole wing with this rounded brush. I don't really need the flat one. So I'm going to take the brush and just kind of go in the corners and turn it. And then I'm just going to pull. Now, right now, I'm just blocking in the whole of this butterfly wing yellow. You could easily make this orange to make them a monarch. You can make it blue if you had a different background. Or you could make it a dark blue. You can make your butterfly look like whatever you like. I suggest that you start looking at images. You know, real life butterflies or photographs of butterflies, heck, even drawings and painting a butterfly. But I think you should look more at the real butterflies. And then you might get an idea of the variety of different patterns, colors, uh, the stripes that they have, so that you're not limited to what I'm about to create. Because I'm just going to, I really just kind of haphazardly threw in some lines and let them cross and intersect with one another to make the pattern that you're going to see. And I'm going to be teaching that pattern here. But again, you're not held to any one design with a peel-off painting. The peel-off painting is an aid. It's to help block in shapes for you to keep you from having to have painted this picture going around these shapes that you have used to peel off to help block out the shapes, to define where you need to go so that you can just be creative. And the more you use them, the better you get. I won't even say the less you use them because you may always use them. 
but you'll start creating differently. You'll start expanding on your level of creativity from here as if you've gone to some school of art. Yeah, I mean that. I know that sounds crazy, but yeah. Because there are no rules in art. Art is about learning techniques and basic things, and then you're supposed to take them to any level that you want. So we're going to use that as our blocking. So now I'm just going to clean off my brush. And while I have this round brush in my hand, and we can let this set up before we go back and paint our body and put in our lines that are going to define our butterfly, why don't I go down here and play around a little bit? So I'm going to go into a little bit of green with my round brush. And I'm just going to go over a couple of spots. Like I like that little darkness here. So let's just go right at the edge here. Pull in some more green. And make it look as if there's a darker edge to that petal or, or greenery right there. And then let's go to the other side. Now I see clumps, I just want to wipe off a little bit. And just right along the edge here, just to add a little bit of something that looks like that. There. Just just that. That, that little that little change right there for me is like gems. So let's do the same thing here. Or diamonds or gold. Gems meaning gemstones. Not gem as a person. And then here we go here. With a little line. And what do these do? Not much. But they add a little difference to me in the painting. And maybe it even adds a little interest. We don't know until a viewer has a comment or two about what they feel. But that just gives it kind of a snap look, you know? Let's just go over here. Let's draw a little line there. Just a little color. I'm just changing the color ever so slightly or just... A few spots just to add some points of interest just for me again you don't have to do this maybe even around the neck area I'm gonna take and put a little green underneath here let's see where we're gonna we we'll go to this side with it we we'll just go in a little color right along the top just a little bit just a little bit. I like that. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. I'm liking the flowers. I'm thinking I'm just going to leave them. And I just added something here. And I'm okay with that too. So I'm not even going to make a big deal out of, out of all of that. I'm just going to go right into the black. I'm going to paint the body. Pull in the antenna. Maybe we could save that for last. And then I'm going to show you how I would cut the black to create the look of the two wings. So why don't we just start with that? I'm gonna put some color on my brush. The first thing I'm gonna do is put in the body of my butterfly. So I'm using a round brush. I'm gonna go into the roundness of his head. And I'm just gonna block this in, take my time here. I don't need to rush. I'm not gonna be able to flip my canvas around because I want you to stay visual. If anything, I'll walk around. So I'm just going to continue to shape this butterfly's body. Now I'm going to come across the flower because he's resting here. He's getting his full. Maybe he's just pollinating. Maybe he's just waiting on someone or she's waiting on someone or they're waiting on someone. Who knows? But I'm just going to block this in and let her or let them just rest on the flower. Now for here, I'm going to go around a little bit so my hand is not going to be in your in your way, I hope. And I'm just going to come back here, enlarge this a little bit, and then I'm just going to create the back shape. And it's just a butterfly shape. I'm not really going for anything perfect. I'm just looking for a shape, just so you can tell that this is the body. Make sure I get rid of as much white as I can. There. It's good enough. That's just the body. It's good enough. Now I'm going to switch brushes. Clean off my brush. For this one, I'm just going to roll it. Let the water come off. Keep it clean. 
put it to the side. So you see the three brushes that I used have been cleaned off and are waiting to either be used again or they can just get a proper cleaning later. Now I'm going to get this what I call a script liner brush. This is a number two script liner brush and it has a slightly longer tip. They can go up as high as here. They're great for lettering. They're great for details. So in this instance, I'm going to put it in the water, roll it around on my paper towel, bring it back to its point, and then I'm just going to roll it into the black at the edge. Let me show you this part, because a lot of people go here. If you look, I've always pulled my colors from edges. So I come here and I just roll it around like I'm turning it, to keep it to a point. Because I want to go right along this edge and just pull in a little line. Now this is dry back here, so I could use my hand on my finger to brace myself. So I'm just going to go right along the edge and very slowly and carefully paint in an edge line. It's going to come all the way down to the, to the body. And then I'm going to slowly start to turn it around here. And I'm going to stop right there. Now I'm going to make the top part a little thicker because I want to. And I'm going to keep the bottom part thin. So maybe right here I'll just increase the width just a smidget on this turn like so. That's the look I want. That's good enough for me. Now I'm going to take the line and literally create the second wing by coming right here with that. So I'm going to keep it to the contour. So I'm going to go right here and then just go like this and say there. Now, that line cuts the back wing. I've now started the, the front wing that we see on this side. So I'm going to continue to go around the edge. And I don't go all the way around. I'm going to probably stop somewhere over here. That's just me. And then I'll go back and, you know, straighten up all the lines. But right now I'm just going to try to continue to make the edge line to show you how I start to trim this wing. Now this could take a few minutes, so I don't need to rush. Because I want to make sure I got good coverage. It's going to be really thick up there, so I'm okay. So you see, all I'm doing is going around the edge right now. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to literally go all the way across and stop right about here. Then I'll thicken up, bring some lines down, bring some lines across, blah, 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 blah. But for right now, all I want to do is put a little color right along the edge to help show you how you... See, walking it around. And slowly but surely, you're starting to see the butterfly come to life. I mean, he's already there, but even more now with this extra color, this dark black against that yellow. See? Just going to trim nice and easily. Again, some of these are going to be thicker lines, but that's not the point of this exercise. The point of this is to show you how you just want to focus on just getting your outline in. We'll worry about the thickness of lines in a moment. And like I promised you, my wing is going to end somewhere about right there for me. That's fine. You can go all the way around if you want. So now that I have that, now that I have that, I can go across between using the flat brush if I wanted this one would make what I'm about to do, this one will make what I'm about to do, or I could continue with this one. But for purposes of the video, I think I'll use this one. Help save some time. So I'm just gonna load up. Now I'm going for thicker lines. So I'm gonna say, okay, right over here is a thicker line. So let me just show you how thick. I'm just gonna leave it open for a second. That's about as thick as I want it, right there. So I'm just gonna fill this in. Now, if you had more time, you can go around these things and make the yellow little dots, but I'm going to show you another way you can do that so that you can look at it as from a beginning standpoint, save you some time, and then as you get better, 
you can leave little hole openings up there if you desire. But for now, I'm just going to close it. I'm going to come this way a little bit more because I want to make sure that there's a thicker separation right here for purposes of distinguishing the back and front line. So you see that extra little tip really sets that back. So now I'm going to continue because there's a thick line that literally runs here and right down here. But I'm not doing this one yet. I'm going to focus on all of this first. So I'm just going to continue to come around. Say so that this line goes here. It's thicker. And then I'll shape it all up in a minute. Because I like to do... I like to do the step-by-step -step procedures, and then as you get better at these things, you'll be able to see beyond. So I'm just going to come around, put another thick line here, make this one nice and thick, show you just how thick, like that thick. And I'm going to keep that that thick all the way around here, and I'm going to end up coming back to here. So I did this purposely so you could see that's how thick everything's gonna end up. So now I'm just gonna block it in. And I can use my detail brush later to go back. But I'm just blocking this all in just to show you. See, that's how thick this is. Thick, right? Going nice and careful, staying in the black as I straighten out things. Now, there's a very thick line that runs right down the middle here. I like to do it like almost like the letter Y. So I come here and I go like this. Then I come over here and I go like this. And then I say, okay, that's going to be that midway point. And then this line just kind <clears> of, <throat> excuse me, brings it all together. Like that. Like, see that little arc that I made? And then I'll come back and fill all this in. And again, you can leave the dots open if you want. But I'm going to show you a trick for that. So now I'm just going to try to work on this shape. Make sure I get it as thick as I want it. On both sides. Like so. So you see? So I've cut this wing into two halves. And I've also created this shape right down the center that I want. And I'm coming right into that black part of the butterfly, which is why I like to paint the body. So now I have a nice thick line in here that can hold some dots. Now I'm just going to pull some lines here and here. I'm going to use the same brush. The first one that I'm going to do over here to keep it simple is remember how I made this Y? I'm going to pull in a Y shape right here. And what do I mean? I'm just going to grab the brush and make the letter Y. Like here's one part of it. Here's another part of it. That's nice. And then going slightly into to a little bit of a turn here, I'm going to make this Y look like that. So now I've started the decoration over here. Now let me go to the back. Show you this one really quick. But yeah, before we go to the back, let's finish this one. Now I'm going to put a V over here. Where's my V? Right here. I'm going to take and make a V that goes like this. And maybe the other part goes like that. There's a V. So you see I made a Y, then I made a V. And for this one, I'm just going to make a little line that's a little lower, right about here, that kind of curls up and goes like that. And that will end the front decoration. Now for the back, I like to make an L, but not just a regular L. So there's my L line first. This is the line that's gonna be the long part of the L, right here. So I'm just gonna make this, and then here I'm gonna make the L, watch. I come right here, just a little bit off, and I go like this, and there's my L shape. See the L? Oh, you could call it a V if you want. I'm going to call it an L. There. Now, from that L, there are two lines. There's one that's in the back back here that goes like this. 
And then there's another one in the front right here that goes like this. And again, I'll go in with my detail brush or this one. And there's the shape. I'm done. Now I'm going to use this brush to finish off and just block in some of those little divot lines. Just to keep it nice and clean. So when I'm shopping with my bag at ShopRite or Stop and Shop or Costco's or wherever you shop to save on plastic, I'm going to be carrying my butterfly on the flower bag and all the other bags that I've made to help carry my groceries now. So not only is this Fashionable, but it's functional. So let me show you this other trick. Let me clean off my brush. Now this other trick is going to sound weird, but just stay with me. Remember this brush? We want to bring it back to a point. And we want to go right into some white. Not yellow. No, not yellow. Because I want to make some dots. So I'm going to dot four dots here. One two, three, four. See? White dots, not yellow. Yellow dots on this black would automatically turn green. Right down here, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. See? Decoration. You can make as many as you want. I'm just doing this number. You can make as many as you want. And then back here, I don't know, let's go crazy. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, you can leave it just like that, or you can let it dry. You can go back with yellow and go back over those dots. For me, I'm going to leave it just like it is. I like it just like that. So there's my butterfly. So let's just take this while we have it. And put a little indication. These are not for eyes. Although you're going to think they are. I'm just going to add a little highlight right there. Just for decoration purposes. Cleaning off my brush. Going to go into some black. And I'm going to pull me a couple of antenna lines. And my painting will be done. So I'm going to come right here. And pull a line that goes maybe from here. To here. And then maybe there's another line right underneath that one. So I'm going to go right here to here. And then I'm just going to put a couple of dots at the tip. Just a little sensory dot there, a little sensory dot there. And my butterfly is complete. Well, I hope you had fun. I know that I did. This is a great little bag. It looks really, really cool. And now we're going to get ready for the unveiling so you can see the bag in its completeness. I just like to move all the equipment out of the way. Don't want any accidents to happen at this point. So now, as I was saying to you, I took masking tape and I just simply put it over the piece. Now, I want to take this off first if I can for you because I want you to see what I added and versus what you would get. Let me just pull this off and try to get right to the uh, block part. But like I said, I'm going to make another video. I'm going to call it the unboxing video because I want you to see what you get in the box when you buy it. When you buy one of these kits. Let me see if I could maybe... So you see, this is this is what you'll get. That right there. That sheet is so helpful. Um, because I have a lot of people who have a lot of difficulties with a lot of things when it comes to art. And at Peel Off, we try to make it all simple for you. Simple, fun, and easy. And so in doing so, it's still on there. But you see, this is what you'll get. You'll get this sheet that has that blocking open for you so that you'll be able to just take some tape if you want put it around the edges of this just to protect the bag in case you're clumsy like I can be 
So I'm just going to now pull off everything because I really want to get to the unveil. You can show you that other part in, a, in another video. So now I'm just going to peel away. I'm just going to peel away all of it so that you can see the finished product. Look how neat those lines are. Look how cool that is. See? See? Easy peasy. A lot easier than the masking tape. And there you have it. And there's our bag. And if you wanted to, you could always, you know, write some words up here or look for our peel off words, you know, to put on here and then paint the whole bag if you wanted to. But there's my bag. There's my bag finished and ready to carry my groceries. Well, I had fun. I hope you did, too. Thank you for joining us. And please subscribe to our peeloff.com YouTube channel so that you can see some of the best and latest videos that we'll be putting out constantly because we are constantly growing with designs and ideas and placements and how you can use peel off on so many different things other than our canvas kits which we carry and our canvas panel kits and our box kits and our banner kits and our tote bag kits and our different type of kits that you can go to peeloff.com to see and if you happen to be a large group especially in New Jersey, and you want us to come out and paint with your residents, your staff, or your group, or your organization, please go to jrobinsonart.com to find out all the information that you need to know about that form of our business. And if you're an out-of-state company outside of New Jersey, we can package up kits for you at a bulk rate, slightly cheaper than what you can buy individually on our sites. But for that, you'll have to enroll in our business to business program. However, you can go to J. Robinson Art to learn more about that too. So again, thank you for painting with us. I had a great time. I hope you like my cute little simple bag that I'm going to now use to go to the grocery stores with. And yes, as a guy, I feel very comfortable carrying a butterfly bag. So anyway, you guys take care. And until next time, don't forget, get yourself some colors, have some fun, push around those colors and be creative. Until next time, bye-bye.